Jake Paul. Jake's the really good. Tell boxer. me about that because I saw I I saw that reported and I got super interested in it, but I I haven't looked into it since. I am fascinating because it's going to happen, and there's nothing I can do to stop it from happening. As mm. a person who understands combat sports, this guy's very skilled. Mm. He's very skilled. He's a very elite boxer. Mm. Like, I'm watching the combinations he throws, his movement, the way he steps and sets up shots, the way he's countering. He's a very high-level boxer. He's a real professional caliber boxer, and he's knocked a bunch of former MMA champions unconscious. Mm. Wow. The one thing he doesn't want to do is fight Mike. No. He wants to fight Mike, I think. Why? I don't know. I don't give a f if he's 55 yeah. that's still Mike Tyson Mike, Mike. if Jake Paul's on the other side of the ring and he sees Mike Tyson just bobbing and weaving he's gonna have a, a recognition yeah. he's gonna look over and go oh my god that's yeah. really Mike Tyson so Joe Rogan has completely backflipped on his position regarding Paul v Tyson last year when he had Ric Flair on his podcast they were waxing lyrical about how Tyson is still Tyson even though he's approaching 60 years old but just a few days ago Rogan went on this massive rant on his podcast about how skilled and professional Jake Paul is as a boxer I'm going to show you the extended conversation because this is probably one of the worst takes I've ever heard from Rogan, and it's making me wonder if Jake Paul's got Rogan on his payroll somehow. We know he's friends with Tyson, but he's never had Jake on his podcast. I actually think he's going to have both Jake and Tyson on his podcast in the next couple of months before the fight, so we'll see if that pans out. But like you heard in the intro there, now all of a sudden, Rogan's worried about Tyson's health and his ability to fight a 27-year-old Jake Paul, and he also feels kind of helpless that there's nothing he can do to stop the fight. It's going to happen, and there's nothing I can do to stop it from happening. Do you want to stop it from happening? I do not necessarily think it's a good idea for 57-year-old men to be fighting 27-year-old men. And Jamie actually pulled up an update on the approval process for the fight. It hasn't been approved yet, which is interesting because we could find ourselves in a scenario where everything's good to go on the promotion front, but the governing body refuses to approve the fight due to concerns over Tyson's health, even though it's only an exhibition. The fight must still be approved. Oh, interesting. It's only been announced on the calendar for the AT&T Stadium. Interesting. <clears throat> They've not been approved by the Texas... Board Interesting. Well, there's probably going to be a lot of pressure for them to not approve it. Just based on his age, the age gap is 30 years, which is just wild. Right. So Rogan knew what the age gap was last year when he made those comments about how Jake should be scared of Mike. But now that the fight's actually been announced, for some reason, his position has totally changed. I seriously had to edit this down quite a bit because Rogan kept repeating himself about how good of a boxer Jake Paul is and how he's an elite professional grade boxer. A 27 year old me fought a 57 year old Mike Tyson. Yeah, he'd beat the fucking shit out of me. It'd be mm -hmm. quick. <coughs> But a 27-year-old Jake Paul who can box and has mm. very good power and he's very fast and he's young. First of all, he's got one-punch knockout power, which is odd. It's, it's an odd thing to have. Not everybody gets it. So you could go, fit, like some of the greats, like Julio Cesar Chavez, one of the greatest of all time, did not have one-punch knockout power. He's a good boxer. Like He's fought very good boxers and he's knocked out a lot of uh, former MMA stars. Uh, including like Tyron Woodley, who's one of the greatest welterweights of all time, and he flatlined him. He's mm -hmm. really good. And if he wasn't Jake Paul, the YouTube guy, just this wild kid coming up in the in the middleweight ranks or the light heavyweight rank, you would go, "Holy shit! Look mm. at this guy. This mm. guy's fun. He's wild. And he wears all this flashy jewelry. He's got crazy tattoos everywhere, and he knocks people unconscious. And he's knocked a bunch of former MMA champions unconscious. Mm. Wow." Knock Ben Askren unconscious, which is, you know, Ben Askren was not really a striker, but Nate Simmons, that <laughs> basketball player, did you see that fight? No. Oh, my God, dude. This is when I was, I was telling people, I'm like, hey, man, he can fight, fight, like mm. really fight. I know Nate is a basketball player, and he's like really athletic and probably out of his element in a boxing match, but he took it because he really believes in himself. Watch what he does, the way he does it, the way he lands these shots. These are real punches mm. that like elite caliber of technique. I'm like, he's got the thing. Okay, so straight up, that is such a terrible take. I mean, I'm the first one to give Rogan respect for his involvement in the MMA community, especially for his role in growing the UFC and promoting it through TV appearances early on and then through his podcast and live commentary. But we all know that he exaggerates and blows things out of proportion. Remember that time he said Ronda Rousey could beat male MMA fighters and then he had to eat his own words after she got knocked out by Holly Holm and Amanda Nunes? 
I'm not happy that Ronda Rousey lost, but in a way, it makes things easier because there was a bunch of fucking people that were going, oh yeah, what about Ronda Rousey? She'll kick in, and I made the mistake of saying, like, hyperbole, okay? I'm the master of hyperbole. I exaggerate all the time. I was like, she could probably beat half the men bantamweights in the, in the UFC. Is that true? No, it's not, definitely not true. <laughs> I shouldn't have said it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> now it's definitely not true. She could beat a few that aren't good outside the sport. Look, if she gets guys in the ground, she could f a lot of people up. Her judo is 100% legit. Her arm bars are amongst the best in the business. But, you know, and then the argument is, well, who she lost to? You know, who, she, who f***ed her up the most? A lesbian. I mean, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, so at least Rogan admitted to driving the hype train on Rousey. But like I was saying before, the way he's rationalizing Jake Paul's abilities as a boxer is almost laughable. He's giving Jake props as an elite boxer for knocking out a few MMA guys, none of which have any professional boxing credentials. Tyrone Woodley was an NCAA Division I wrestler. So was Ben Askren, who was actually known for his poor striking in MMA. And then Rogan used the example of Jake's fight against Nate Robertson, who he mistakenly mistakenly referred to as Nate Simmons. I mean, the guy was a point guard who could dunk, and Rogan's using Jake's form against him as proof that he's an elite boxer. Here's the thing that gets me about all of this, right? You can train to be a boxer, improve your footwork, improve your coordination, punch selection, build up your boxing IQ and movement. You can look great in training videos. You can also get in the ring with a bunch of never been good boxers and look half decent. But as soon as you jump in the ring with an elite boxer, and some people would even argue that Tom Fury is not an elite boxer, although he was definitely the best that Jake's fought so far. But anyway, when you jump in the ring with an elite boxer, all that fancy footwork and technique you developed in training will go out the window so fast you won't know what hit you. And Rogan should know that more than anyone. Hitting the pads, hitting the bag, even boxing a few MMA fighters means nothing. I've said this before, put Jake Paul in the ring with Canelo in his current form, not when he's 60, and Jake never steps in the ring again guaranteed. Now, I'm obviously a casual. Some of my regulars will know I do a little bit of kickboxing and jiu-jitsu, so I'm definitely no expert, but I've trained with a couple of professional boxers over the years, and as soon as they get serious, all of your training goes out the window. Nothing prepares you for that moment when they're exactly where you don't want them to be. They're constantly walking you down, putting pressure on you so you make a mistake and open yourself up. Rogan seemed to understand that last year when Jake Paul first called out Mike Tyson. The one thing he doesn't want to do is fight Mike. No. He wants to fight Mike, I think. Why? I don't know. I don't give a f if he's 55. Yeah. That's still Mike Tyson. Mike, Mike's in good shape, too. Oh, my God. Mike I've... trains every day. He trains with Rafael mm -hmm. Cordero, who's a legend in MMA. He runs King's uh, Mixed Martial Arts. Yeah, Mike, that guy he, can still f*** yeah, you yeah, up. He don't, he don't want to fight Mike. In this world, with hormone replacement and vitamins and like, and I don't give a f*** if you think he's 55 years old. That guy will hurt yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. If Jake Paul's on the other side of the ring and he sees Mike Tyson just and bob it and weave it, he's going to have a, a recognition. Yeah. He's going to look over and go, oh my God, that's yeah. really Mike Tyson. I will say though, after Rogan gassed up the hype train on Jake Paul, he did mention that Tyson does have a chance if he can get his body right for the fight. With modern day science and various conditioning and recovery techniques, Rogan thinks Tyson can get his body in the right window to be a problem for Jake Paul, even though he'll be 58 years old for the fight. I think sure Tyson time. is such a genetic freak that his 57 may not have declined from his prime as much as a normal person? Yes, and science. It's not 57 in the Jack Johnson days. We're right. talking about 57 in the days of biological engineering. You're able to do all kinds of stuff with his human growth hormone levels, mm -hmm. with the use of peptides, with the use of testosterone. A 57-year-old today that's on hormone replacement and you're, you're eating well and taking a lot of vitamins and creatine and you're using all these strategies like red light therapy and saunas and cold plunge. It could be one of those fights where Mike Tyson gets him in a corner and connects with a punch and Jake Paul just goes limp. But then there's the problem of Tyson's sciatica and how it's previously forced him to use a walking stick and even a wheelchair. Rogan actually explained how preparing for a fight can actually make it worse and cause it to flare up, which again is one of the reasons why people are starting to doubt Mike Tyson. The thing is, can he close the gap? Can, can, can he move? As a quickness point. He has problems yeah. with his back. He's uh, had sciatic problems mm -hmm. to the point where a year or so ago he was walking with a cane. Your um, nerves are getting pushed. So something's pushing on your nerves. It could be a bulging disc. It could be a, bu a bunch of different things. But that's an issue. 
It's a real issue that can become chronic, especially when you're going through a long and intensive training camp like he's going through now up to July 20th. So Rogan's all over the place with this one. The way he was hyping up Jake was just plain stupid in my opinion. We all know that Jake and his brother Logan are in control of everything they do. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it wouldn't surprise me if they've got Rogan on the payroll to promote this fight by gassing up Jake as an elite fighter. We don't know the full extent of the terms and the contract for this fight, so it's really hard to know what restrictions they've put on Mike to make it go the distance. But if this wasn't an exhibition and Tyson was free to unleash on Jake, there's no question it'd be over in the first round. Jake just doesn't have the training or experience to deal with a former heavyweight champion, even if he's 27 years old. Just looking at Jake's knockouts, so many of them look staged, and we saw how Floyd Mayweather literally carried Logan Paul when he caught him by accident and got worried Logan was going to go down too early in the fight. There must have been a no knockout clause in that fight, and I'm almost certain there would be one for Jake and Tyson, even though it's obvious that Jake is a much better boxer than his brother Logan is. The other thing is, Jake owns his own gym, and he's a multi-millionaire. Most boxers with as little experience as he has don't have those kind of resources to dedicate to training for an exhibition, so with everything we know about the fight so far, it's not an impossible task for Jake to train his way into a position where he can go the distance with the assistance of Tyson as well. And that's probably how this is going to pan out. They'll definitely have incentivized Mike in the contract to go the distance with Jake so they can maximize their airtime on Netflix and create a perception of value for subscribers. Tyson was notorious for ending fights in the first round and annoying everyone who paid good money to see his fights. Having said that, most people don't talk about this, but Tyson lost three of his last four fights, two by knockout, and the very last one against McBride when his trainer Jeff Fennick pulled the pin to protect Mike in the seventh round. Now, even though Mike was in his 30s at the end of his professional boxing career, he was losing to elite heavyweight boxers. So my point in telling you all of this is that Rogan should be more upfront with his audience about this upcoming fight. He claims to be someone who understands combat sports, and we all know he's been around MMA for over 30 years, yet he hasn't once mentioned that this is an exhibition fight and that the Paul brothers have made careers out of staging fights and scamming their fans. Instead, he's promoting Jake Paul's boxing skills and claiming he's an elite fighter when everyone else seems to be able to see this for what it is. Anyway, that's the latest on Paul v. Tyson. Let me know in the comments below what you think about all of this, and if you're not a regular of this channel, hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. But there is a difference between Mike Tyson and a regular person. There just is. I, I, uh, I, I, I listened to your podcast with Kurt Metzger, who, who I know and I've been on his podcast, had a great time on his pod. He's a fun dude. He is. Uh, but I think I disagree with you both kind of on the Israel issue.